guys, what's up? Stephanie here. So, I just want to share some of my thoughts with you guys and, and some of the things that I've been experiencing and been learning. So, one of the things that I've, that has been really clear for me in my life recently, specifically after I got back from traveling, I feel like my real inner journey began. I've gone through so many internal shifts and uh, I've just had so many incredible, incredible, amazing just changes and, and learning. And it, it's been difficult at times. I've had an emotional ride, but Nonetheless, I mean, I, I wouldn't change it for anything because I have just been gaining so much strength and wisdom and, and clarity and, and getting back in touch with, with myself and it's been, it's been worth it because what you guys don't know is that for a while there I really kind of got off track a little bit. I, I uh, started exploring a lot, a lot of contrast. So I was out of alignment with myself for a while and, and really was not trusting in myself and listening to my intuition and I kind of lost my own self-belief which is what prompted me to go travel it was this desire and I felt like my guides in the universe were pushing me to do this because it was going to be the first step for me to get back into alignment with myself it's been an amazing journey I, I am back to really myself but an even better version than I've ever been I'm so in tune and so connected and I'm finally out of my head because guys let me tell you something I went through a period I've, I've explored so much different range of contrast and one of the periods of my life that I had I was living all here I was so disconnected from my body so I had become so desensitized that I mean when I was a child I could feel everything I mean since little one of my gifts um, is the fact that I can really read energy and feel things and feel people's emotions and get information in that way and I had to shut that aspect of myself so down because I was living in my head for so long that I yeah became really desensitized <laughs> in, in a lot of aspects so it's just been <laughs> I don't know it's been pretty incredible and and I wish I could give you guys like all the little details and stories but then I would be here forever. Well, one of the things that the universe that I'm working with the universe on is really talked about it in the last couple of videos that I've done which is authenticity, transparency and speaking up for myself. And so the universe has been bringing me interesting scenarios specifically when it comes into the dating arena of my life. And it's really been giving me the opportunity to practice these things that I want to fine tune within myself. It all started when I let myself go into the experience. I don't know if you watched the video that I did called This Isn't What I Prefer and it's basically where I share with you guys briefly how I attracted a married man into my experience and I was like, okay. So ever since I allowed myself to go into that experience and gain the message that it had for me, it's been pretty incredible because I've continued to learn the universe once I kind of, I would say it's a test because I asked for something. I, I, there are certain things that I've been wanting to bring in my life, which is authenticity, transparency, and speaking up for myself, the universe brought me that interesting opportunity. I was able to identify that as an opportunity for me to practice what I say I prefer because what I realize is that in order for our reality to change we need to take action because see a lot of times I, I have girlfriends and people that I know who and, and listen I'm guilty of this in the past I have experienced every kind of contrast and have played every role that you can imagine when it comes to relationships so this is not a judgment in any way it's just an observation that I have come to see you know, people, I've had girlfriends who say, oh, I, I want a relationship, I want to get married, I want kids, I really, really want to get married, blah, blah, but their actions is completely in opposition to what they say they want. They are, for example, continually uh, having relationships with married men, and again, not a judgment, that's neither good or bad, <laughs> it's just a preference, and if it's, if it's right for you, then that works. But, uh, or, or dating, you know, celebrities or people in power that, you know, are not going to be the commitment that you want. And I only point that out because if you are saying that you want commitment and you want a relationship and you want to get married, but then 
the men that you're allowing yourself to get involved with are the opposite of what you want, then you're moving completely in opposition to where you want to be. And sometimes we think, oh, okay, I can just fill my time and I'll just, I'll just do this and I'll, and I'll spend time with this person and maybe I don't really like them or I like a couple of things about them and they're really not the person that I want to be with. But you know what, I have nothing better to do or I don't want to be alone so I might as well just fill my time with this person and, and when the right person comes along then they'll come along and that's it. But we don't understand that we're, when we're even making decisions like that, like spending time with people as for fillers and when we know that they're not what we want and we're not just going into the experience to learn what we need to learn and move on but we're just kind of just filling time and waiting and hoping that the right person will come along for us. It, they never do, right? And because your actions are in direct opposition to what you say you prefer. And I think if any of you have ever have, are familiar with Brashar's work, um, he talks about the echo effect and how in order for things to change in your reality, things are going to usually look the same before they change because what it's going to happen is going to give you the opportunity for you to act as if things have changed, for you to react differently to something that looks the same. And I was able to really, really get that concept and put it into practical use with that experience with the married man because here I had the situation that wasn't what I preferred, but it was enticing because there was a lot of things about it that was enticing other aspects of myself. The way that I was saying I preferred. And there, after that, the universe tested me by bringing me uh, some new people and some people from my past and I started realizing that's when I realized the trap that we sometimes fall into oh shit here's I had a person from my past come back into my life and really you know let me know how they felt about me and that you know since we broke up you know they're still in love with me and that they want to be with me and you know I really have a lot of love for this person and there's a lot of things that I that I really like about him but as much as I like those things, you know, when we spent some time together again and he opened up about how he felt and he, you know, was pro propositioning for us to move in together and all these things, I had to really stop because I realized that he isn't fully what I want. There's certain aspects of him that they just clash with who I am, like the core of who I am. We just clash so I just cut the connection because I don't want to waste his time and I don't want to waste my time and I don't want to just fill my time until the right person comes along because I recognize that that's not the way that it works I've had enough experience in this I've made enough or played in enough contrast to already recognize this and it's so beautiful so as soon as I recognize that and I said okay no this isn't what I want this isn't what I want and I acted in that way, then the next person that came into my reality was, I would say, 90% more preference than contrast. And we went on a date, but I got in my own way. And so that opportunity went away. But I learned so much from it because I learned that, hey, I am no longer in my head. And when we went on the date, I was 95% of the time in my body and in feeling and not in my head and it just so happens that towards the end of the day I completely got in my head and I and I perp and I not purposely but um, unconsciously I cut the connection between him and I because I got in my head and so but I was able to go through the experience I did the process of feel it see and transform it and so the net the, the newest person that I attracted into my reality which was completely unexpected because it happened immediately like two days after me meeting the other guy and it not working out and then I, I cleared all the emotional stuff out because that's another thing that I realized as we are uh, clarifying more what we want to the universe and acting in ways that we say we prefer we also are going to be met up with our emotions because if you meet someone and you like them like what happened to me and then like you get in your own way or it doesn't work out which is my next story, 
you're going to have emotions about it and you're going to feel and what happens is the way that we can also get stuck and stay in place longer is when we don't know how to clear our emotions or when we stay in that same feeling space so the fact that I met the second to last guy who what you say um, I got in my own way the date that, that I just went on one date basically um, if I would have like kept moping around and been like I messed up and oh my god he was so blah 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 like sometimes we can be really neurotic or get in our head and become very uh, obsessive I maybe wouldn't have met the per the next person as quickly because I wouldn't have been able to let go of that energy but you know I let it go and I went through the process and then immediately I met someone new who asked me out on a date and I happened to go on like four dates with this person but every time we would go on a date it would be like for seven hours and we spent a lot of time together I really got to know him I was really pleasantly surprised I wasn't expecting anything when I met him I wasn't even expecting to meet him you know, I was at a coffee shop clearing out all my emotions from my last date. <laughs> and here's a new person already. So, um, but it was great because I, I learned, I was learning a lot. As every time we went on a date, I learned new things about myself, things that I was doing differently and how I'm more really myself and how I'm really, really owning my own power and how I'm so in tune with my feelings and, and I'm not any longer in my head and I'm not in other people's heads and I'm not concerned with what they're thinking or not because I, I'm really at a place where I'm really starting to know and now I can say that I really know what I want thanks to this last experience that I had. So this last uh, guy that I attracted, like I said, we went on all these dates and we were really connected and he was really, really feeling me and he was definitely more expressive than I was because in the past I've been the opposite I'm a little bit more intense and I was always like really open about my emotions and now I'm in a more grounded and centered space upon myself so he was you know letting me know how he felt about me and he was already making all these plans and activities and things for us to do it just so happens that a week into us meeting and going on all these dates I have to leave to New York and I basically was telling him I didn't know how long I was going to be gone because I was going to be gone for definitely two weeks, but it could have been all the way up to a month, and I wasn't sure how long it was going to be. And, you know, in a way, I wasn't... Even though it was really soon to leave after meeting someone, um, I just kind of figured that if it's the right person, it was it's going to work out, you know, a week, um, two weeks or a month shouldn't really make a big difference. <laughs> and then um, when I get to New York, I get to New York on a Saturday and we spoke on Sunday. Everything was cool, he was still the same, I can still feel his energy connected. And then on Tuesday, I just sent him a text message because it was his birthday. And then three days kind of go by and I really wasn't thinking about him and I hadn't reached out and not because I didn't care, it was just I was really in the present moment, I was really busy and working and the other aspect that I've been working on in, in my inner work has been really being in the present moment because I recognize that the more that we can be in the present moment and really not have thought and then when we're doing something we're only thinking about the task at hand, we're not in the past and we're not in the future and we're not replaying all these loops in our heads that we usually have. If you're just present here, the more present that we can be, the more in tune you can be with the energy. You can you can read everything. You can know when the right time to call someone is, when the right time to, you know, go look for a job, when the right time to, you just will be in tune with the universal flow and you don't have to be working so upstream. And I was really proud of myself because I recognized that those three days I was so in tune and so in the present moment and I really had no thought except whatever it is that I was doing in that moment. And then Friday evening, I'm sitting outside in my brother's backyard and I'm like, fuck, I was like, man, I haven't called so and so. I was like, let me reach out to him and send him a text, see how he's doing. So I did. He didn't respond for a couple of hours and when he sent me a message, we had a very quick, uh, casual text exchange in which for most people, you wouldn't have picked up anything because it was very normal. Hey, how are you? How's New York? How are you doing? Blah, blah, blah. But me being who I am, I have a really <laughs> uncanny ability to read energy. I just, I've always had it since I was little. Um, and so I 
can immediately tell when something's off and what people are feeling. So the minute I read those words, which there were nothing, just a regular text message, I was like, oh shit. I was like, something shifted in his mind. He has gotten in his own way and he's cut the connection. So I felt that, but in the moment I didn't speak up about it because I wanted to just assess what I was feeling and what I was interpreting. So, you know, we spoke briefly. He had to go, I had to go. Mind you, this is all via text. So the next day I decided, you know what, part of what I'm doing on this path is that I'm practicing speaking up for myself and vocalizing how I feel because I recognize that for a long time I got into the pattern of not honoring my feelings and not speaking up and not seeing what I feel for fear of how the other person might feel about it or if it might push them away or whatever. And a lot of that comes from childhood stuff and I actually figured out the trigger a couple of days ago and I guess I'll make another video about that because if not this will be like a really really long video it's already long um, but anyways so I was like you know what let me just let him know how I'm feeling and so I sent him a message and I was like hey listen yesterday when we spoke I felt that I felt your energy different and I feel like um, maybe there's been a shift and I don't know if the fact that I came to New York so early into us meeting each other if that would have you know maybe shifted something for you but um i felt a little anxious about it and a little uneasy so i just wanted to share with you how i'm feeling i sent him this message i don't hear from him all day this was in the morning i sent him the text message and he ended up texting me at 7:30. so when he sends me this text message it's completely deflective and i recognize it because i used to be the queen of deflection so he was like hey how are you no he was like hey sorry I've been sleeping all day I got in at 6 a.m. how are you just reading your text messages now still sleepy so I'm reading this and I'm expecting <laughs> expectations not good I was expecting that his next text message would be some sort of acknowledgement of what I told him even if at that moment he couldn't talk about it didn't want to talk about it I just expected hey got your text message let's talk about it another day blah 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 nothing he doesn't mention anything so at this point I'm like screw it I'm not he, he obviously knows that I put myself out there and he's not even acknowledging it so I'm just gonna let it go and I already felt the energy I was like he's already disconnected and I've I already did my part I reached out I tried to put myself out there say what I was feeling what I was picking up and I was giving him the opportunity to share with me where he was at so I didn't reply back and at that point I was like you know what I knew that I, this is something I had to let go because it wasn't gonna work out so I started going through the process of it you know feeling all the emotions I was feeling because I was I was disappointed I was just like you know I know it, it's only been a week that we had spent time together but we spent a lot of time together in that week and you know I was actually excited because he turned out he was very much a preference compared to anything in my past and um, yeah, and we really, we both had a connection, it was mutual. So anyways, I go through the process, I do my see it, feel it, and transform it. And a few days pass, but I'm still not over it because I'm having these dreams where subconsciously I can, I can tell that it's still bothering me. And what I couldn't get over is the fact that I just couldn't, I didn't understand why. Like, what happened? What happened from a week to me leaving to New York and just four days of me being in New York at this point that made him shift so it was I couldn't get the why out of my head the why was killing me and I know that's a very human aspect but I just it was killing me and that was what wasn't allowing me to let go of it fully out of my body and just really let it go and at this point he still wasn't calling and I just I tell my guides I'm like you know what guys I really really need to know what happened like I what shifted in him and so one of the days I'm, I'm talking to my guides and I'm asking them this and I'm brushing my teeth and I receive um, this information and what I get is the only thing that I can think of that happened was that Sunday after I got to New York that we spoke where we were really connected I happened to ask him about church because he goes to church and you know when I met him this was one of the things he told me before he knew he didn't know I was spiritual he didn't know anything about me because I let him do all the talking so that I can really assess who he is because oftentimes another thing that I've learned in the dating process is sometimes 
uh, guys can become a little infatuated with the way that I think or the way that I am or speak, yet um, they make a idea or a perception of who I am. Um, so with him, I really scaled back and rather than being the one to you know lead the conversation because I can talk about anything and you know I can make anyone feel comfortable I really just was more reserved and I let him talk so that I can really get to know him and not say something because sometimes you say something about yourself and then the other person starts adjusting themselves to be what they think that you want them to be and I've noticed this a lot so I didn't do that and one of the things I learned about him, he was told me that he was that he went to church, but he, without me saying anything, he specifically told me that he wasn't religious. That he just that was how he plugged in. So, anyways, so I knew that church was really important to him, and that Sunday I knew that he got he had gone to church. So I asked him. I was like, "Oh, I was like, how was church? What did you learn?" And so he was telling me what he learned, and he was like, yeah, he's like, I'm going to send you this passage from, I don't know what, from the Bible, I don't know what passage. And he's like, I'll text it to you. And I remember that when he said that, I felt oh, the resistance immediately come up in my body. And I believe that as this resistance came up, it showed in my face. And I made a face expression, and... He picked up on it and at that moment I think that when that happened I didn't have enough awareness to catch myself doing that and to read him interpreting my face expression to say something about it so this is what I received from my guys and I'm like shit I'm like it has to do with this and then the other thing that I received was that part of him shut down also because I left to New York so soon into us meeting so I get this information I feel a little bit better, but I'm still kind of, no, still, I'm not going to lie, I was still kind of doubting um, myself. Um, and then, you know, a week passes, I leave New York, still haven't talked to him. And, you know, I already went through the process, and I, there's still a little bit that I couldn't let go of. When I leave New York and I'm driving down to Miami, I stop in the middle of um, North Carolina, because that's where my best friend now lives. and. I stay there to sleep so I can have a break from all the driving. So when I went to go see my best friend that day we went out to dinner and then we ended up getting coffee and just sitting in the car and chatting like old days. Back in high school we used to talk in the car all the time and that's when we had our best conversation. So we were just talking and you know catching her up and I was telling her how I was feeling and everything that I learned from this experience. And so thanks to him I know exactly now what I want in a man because before I, I never really tangibly could see what that is exactly and now and now I'm very key on that and um, also meeting him which you guys don't know yet gave me an opportunity to really speak up for myself and hone in on that energy that I've been working on so um, so I'm telling her you know what I what I'm learning and um, but I was telling her I was like but damn Susie I just you know, I'm over it, but I just still can't let it go. And I can't let it go because I just, I can't get the why out of my head. Like, it just baffles me as to why he just shifted. And then he, he couldn't even have the courtesy to communicate to me what happened. So as we're talking, I can feel my guy coming through. And then my best friend's a medium. So all of a sudden, both my guides and her start chiming in. And they say the same thing that I had received a couple of days ago when I was talking to my guides that it had to do with religion and had to do with the fact that I left to New York so soon and basically he got in his own head about it and just cut the connection. So as soon as that all was said, I was like, <sighs> it was like an immediate release because it was like this double confirmation. It was confirming me what I received and letting me know that I need to trust what I get because I'm usually always on point. It's just that I get in my own way because I don't trust and the message that I'm receiving so right there that was like my confirmation that what I was receiving is the truth and um, and that just released it I, I felt it leave my body and I was like oh okay feel good we kept talking and then Susie was like oh let's go watch sex in the city too I have it and we went back to her house and we just we went to just you know bond and watch the movie together because I hadn't seen her since I got back from traveling so in the middle of watching the movie, I need to go to the restroom, and so I go and I pee, and 
very candid guys and they're in the bathroom peeing and talking to my guides and I'm like guides thank you so much you know I feel so great and I feel so free it's like I, I really was able to let this go and I just really appreciate you like confirming and giving me the information as to the why I know that it's very human but I really just needed it in order to let this go and I'm just I'm just so thankful I was like so grateful because I just felt free and um, you know and then I go back to the room I finish watching the movie and then and the movie's over I'm gonna go to sleep but before I go to sleep I always look at my phone and um, I look at my phone right before I go to bed and guess what yes you guessed it Mr. <laughs> uh, disappearance has sent me three text messages requests me on Facebook and likes a couple of my pictures so this is like the most activity I've had from him in about a week so I was like oh my god I was so excited but not so excited because he did text me even though I'm not gonna front I was happy that he texted me but I was more excited like a little kid because I just love to see the universe at work I love when I am actually when I'm doing the work I love to just see the results of it especially when it's instantaneous and it was so fast because I literally let it go in the car two hours and two hours later this guy who hasn't reached out to me in a week reaches out to me and it was beautiful it was a masterpiece <laughs> of universal work um, I know I'm a nerd guys but this is this is what I live for <laughs> these synchronicities so that was so amazing so I didn't text him back that day but I accepted his request on Facebook and I went to sleep the next morning I woke up and I sent him a message I was like hey I'm good um, you know I'm in North Carolina I'm driving back to Miami how are you so I'm driving down to Miami it's another 12 hours and that whole 12 hours this MF <laughs> has not texted me back so I'm like now I'm like I'm frustrated because I'm like really the next day I was just like really frustrated I was like you know what I just I gotta I gotta go write and I wanted to write everything that I experienced in New York with this and all the synchronicities and just really get everything out of my body so I wake up really early at 7 o'clock in the morning I go to Starbucks I sit down I write I do my stuff and I'm there for about three hours so now it's gonna be 11 and I'm about to get ready to go but I have to do one more thing on the computer and I'm sitting there and I look up and guess who is coming right in towards me? Him. And so it was like we both saw each other and at this point it's like there's nowhere to fucking hide. You can't run. I mean, I guess technically you can, but you know what I mean. So at this point he comes over and I'm like, holy shit. I'm like, this is what I'm thinking inside. I'm like, fuck, I'm nervous because I wasn't, I wasn't ready for all of this. So he comes, he sits down, he's like, hey, how are you? And here we are with small talk. How are you? How was New York? Da -da -da. I was like, good, good. And I'm just thinking in my head, I was like, Stephanie, you have to say something. Like, this is your opportunity. You have them right in front of you. I was like, I just need to get everything off my chest because this is what I've been practicing. I'm being able to speak up for myself. And I was like, I can't do this small talk when there's this big elephant in the room. So I was just like, all right. So I was like, hey, I was like, what's been going on with you? What's like, what's up with you? He's like, what do you mean? I'm like, you know, I've reached out to you and you completely ignored me and he's like oh you know it's just that <laughs> I don't like having those kinds of conversation via text message and I'm like I'm like okay I was like well if that's if that's really the case then you could have at any point just simply sent me a message and said hey listen we'll talk about this when I see you or you know I'll call you whenever for us to talk about it but you never even acknowledge the fact that I put myself out there and so at this point he's quiet he's like yeah I'm, I'm sorry and um, and I was like, yeah, it's, I was like, look at that, it's cool. I was like, I just don't understand what happened. There's obviously a, sh a shift, something shifted inside of you. And I thought that we had, you know, I know that we just got to know each other, but at least I feel like we developed a friendship where you could, you know, communicate to me and tell me if you weren't feeling this anymore, if you felt like you didn't want to pursue this any further when I opened myself up to you that was a perfect opportunity for you to communicate to me how you were feeling and you didn't do that and you know it was it was, it was kind of frustrating but that's that's fine because you you obviously know why you cut the connection and um, he's like yeah I'm sorry I really handled it wrong and I could see him thinking and I could see him feeling like like shit about it 
He's like, oh, yeah, you're right. And um, so at that point, he starts opening up to me and he tells me what happened because I asked him. I said, I said, there was a shift. He's like, what do you mean? I was like, you disconnected. I said, something happened in your mind that a few days after I got to New York, you decided that you were going to cut the connection between us. I already know what it is, but, you know, I just, I, I was just hoping that you would be able to just at least communicate to me how you feel because one of the things that you and I talked about when we met was how important communication was for you and I perceived you as a man who can handle emotions and who can handle uncomfortable conversations so at that point he just started opening up and he basically told me that it had to do with religion which I was like oh, inside he's telling me this by the way I'm nervous as shit throughout this whole process so even though I'm speaking up and I was so proud of myself because I was telling him everything that I felt um, I was nervous, so nervous, and he could feel it. Um, but in my head, when he told me that, I was like, yes, cha-ching, because I was like, Confir confirmation again that what my guys told me was on the money. And he basically told me, he's like, do you remember when, you know, what the, one of the last times that we hung out and you asked me if I would care if, um, if the person I was with, if they, would go, if they wouldn't go to church with me, if that would be okay with me. And I told you yes. And I was like, yeah, I remember that. And he was like, well, I just started thinking about it after and I just really didn't understand if I, like, why you wouldn't, you know, wouldn't go to church with me if, if I would be willing to, you know, learn about the things that you believe in and things like that. So at this point when he said that, I was like, you know what? I was like, thank you. I, I really appreciate you telling me this because if you would have communicated this to me when you had this thought you would have given me the opportunity to clarify if what you were feeling was right or not if you would have told me that me going to church with you one day a week was really that important to you then I would have told you that you know if we developed something and we got serious in the future if that was really important to you that I would do that for you because I know that you know you would you're open to you know the things that I believe in I said but you never gave me the opportunity to clarify that I said you just assumed and you just cut the connection and then I also ended up mentioning to him how I noticed that he shifted on Sunday when we talked about uh, church and when he told me he was going to text me those passages and he acknowledged that he was like he was kind of smirking because he couldn't believe that I caught that and, and that I noticed that that's when the shift happened. And he was like, yeah. And I said to him, you know, I was honest with you from the beginning that I have resistance towards church because of my experiences. But I am I know that it's important to you, which is why I made it a point to ask you about church anyways. And the fact that I made a face, you know, wasn't for any wrong reasons. It was just a natural, like, resistance. But, um... You never even, you know, gave me the chance to clarify that if if that's how you felt. And, you know, he apologized to me for the way that he handled the situation because he realized after us speaking that he really did not handle as far as communicating. Um, I just felt really proud of myself because I said everything that I needed to say. And I go home and I'm still really excited because I'm like, oh my God, I just got this opportunity to really, like it caught me off guard. and. I didn't shut down and I just put it all on the line and so I was so so proud of myself that so that was my experience with him <laughs> so that was really interesting and even though it didn't work out and it kind of was a bummer I gained so much out of that because I got confirmations from my guides knowing that the, the information that I received is on point I was able to recognize that what I'm always feeling and that my energy uh, abilities are on point and it gave me an opportunity to practice once again to speak up to speak my truth and he showed me what it is that I really prefer in a man and the things that are important to me because although he was so much more of a preference I would say 95% of a preference in a man of the things that I would want I realized that communication is huge for me and I am very very emotionally aware and intelligent and on top of that, I feel energy and I'm always getting information. So I'm always going to talk about the things that I feel and the things that I'm picking up. So if I'm with someone who can handle communicating and they're not ready to look at their own stuff and to do the work, it's 
it's not going to work out. So he really taught me that and it was it was an amazing experience. So I don't know, I'm sharing all of this with you guys to kind of let you in a little bit more into my life rather than just always just sharing with you the tidbits of the things that I'm learning um, and really give you more of like actual experiences in real time and allow you to take whatever it is that you're meant to take from it for your own journey. So I love you guys and I will talk to you soon. Bye.